Good evening, YouTubers. This is your very favorite apologist in the whole world, the atheist killer, back with a brand new video. This video I'm about to do tonight is very important. It might be one of the most important videos that I've ever done, aside from the Elliot argument or some of my other arguments. This video is titled, Why the Big Bang Model Fails Without a Creator. Now, the Big Bang Model is the prevailing theory amongst many atheists. And I am the atheist killer, so I feel like I needed to address this issue. Uh, a lot of people ask me questions about the Big Bang anyway, so I figured I'd make an entire video surrounding this topic for the people out there who watch my videos and need help understanding why exactly it is that the Big Bang model fails unless a creator was responsible for it. So let's break this down nice and slowly for you. First of all, we need to know what the Big Bang model asserts. Without getting too scientific, the Big Bang model supposes that there was an initial singularity, which suddenly expanded and in doing so created our entire universe and everything inside it. But what is a singularity? The singularity in the Big Bang model simply refers to a super condensed pinpoint of energy. So I just need you to visualize this for a moment and help you get a mental picture and grasp this concept. Look, there was a super condensed energy. It expanded, and then by expanding created our entire universe. Okay, so now this is where we get into why the Big Bang model fails unless a creator was behind it. First of all, question number one. Let me ask you this question. Is it possible for any type of energy to exist if space itself doesn't exist? Meaning, if there was no such thing as space at all, could energy even exist? The answer is no. Without space, there would be no potential for the energy to exist within. So this is very important. Why? Because this proves to us that there was time prior to the energy in the Big Bang model expanding. How so? Well because we know that space and time are closely related, but also because time itself only ceases to exist in the absence of both space and events. So before the energy in the Big Bang model expanded and created our entire universe, there was both space and time. Now once this has been established, we then need to get into question number two. Question number two can be presented like this. Can a singularity exist without there being any events happening? What I mean by this is, can the energy itself exist without moving or transferring or spinning or heating up or cooling down or having momentum or reacting in any type of way whatsoever? In a sense, being completely frozen without any events occurring within or surrounding itself? The answer is no. So what does this, what does this teach us? What can we learn by this? This actually proves to us that there were events happening before the singularity in the Big Bang model expanded and created our entire universe. Now, again, it's important to remember that time only ceases to exist if there is an absence of both space and events. So, we've already determined from question number one that there was space, providing evidence that there was time. But now, from question two, we are learning that there was also events happening prior to the expansion. So this really just confirms for us the fact that there was time prior to the energy expanding in the Big Bang model. Now some people say it's an illogical question to ask if there was space and time before the expansion because space and time were just simply a product of the expansion itself. But now we are learning this is not true. There would have to be an absence of both space and events for one to be able to make such an absurd claim the claim that there was no time prior to the expansion. However, from my two questions, I have proved not only do we have one, but we have both. Meaning we don't just have events occurring, or we don't just have space, we have both events and space prior to the expansion, really solidifying the fact that there most certainly, definitely, positively was time. So what does all this mean? Well, this leads us to a third question. Where did all this space and time come from that existed prior to the expansion of the Big Bang model? And here, we really only have two choices if we deny a creator. Either the space and time came from pure nothingness on their own, by nothing, from nothing, or they existed eternally in the past and never began to exist at any moment, but just always were. Both of these choices are irrational and illogical and have no evidence. How? Well, first we know that pure nothingness only breeds more nothingness. This is a scientific fact. From nothingness, nothing comes. There's no reason for one to believe otherwise. P 
People who deny a creator sometimes bring up virtual particles, but those are people who have no idea of what quantum physics is all about. Virtual particles arise as spontaneous fluctuations of energy contained in a subatomic vacuum. This is known as the quantum vacuum. The quantum vacuum is a rich sea of fluctuating energy endowed with a rich structure and is subjected to physical laws. It's emphatically not pure nothingness. So examples like this therefore do not involve evidence of a pure ex nihilo creation. So there is no evidence something can come from pure nothingness and then that something go ahead and then create entire universes. And it's also an irrational and illogical position. Next, we know that if space and time existed eternally in the past and never began to exist, that would be completely irrational and illogical. There are many, 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 many philosophical problems with taking a stance where space and time are eternal, such as infinite regress and many others. Some demonstrations for you can go like this. If you had an unlimited amount of time in the past eternity for us to have come into being, it would have happened already. Another like this. If time is not given a starting point and you never get to our I'm sorry, if time is not given a starting point, you never get to our current position. And another example like this. One could ask themselves, how long would it take to get from point A to point B if point A is an infinite distance away? Or if you're standing in a line with an infinite amount of people in front of you, do you ever get your turn? Etc. etc. You see, time has to be given a starting point or we never get our turn. Yet, here we are today getting our turn. This includes multi-universe theory, or a big crunch, or claiming that the universe expands and then collapses on itself and then another big bang recreates the process. Those would be examples of eternal cycles in the past that never had a beginning, but had been occurring forever and ever once again never allowing our universe to be the one which gets created. Now, a creator on the other hand does not face these issues because a creator would be spaceless, timeless, and immaterial. So there is no time prior to the creator creating it, at which point giving time the starting point it needs and therefore allowing us to reach our current moment. But beyond all the philosophical problems with space and time being eternal in the past, all the evidence actually points to the opposite position as well. All the evidence points to the universe having a finite beginning and a very distinct starting point. So, if space and time didn't come from pure nothingness on their own, and space and time cannot have existed eternally in the past, what does this mean? This means that the Big Bang model cannot be valid unless it was created by a creator. In which case, giving space and time a starting point, and also bringing space and time into existence, as opposed to them coming into existence on their own from pure nothingness. As we know, a creator is not pure nothingness. Also, the creator doesn't create from pure nothingness. Everything, everything that exists in our universe was manifested from within him. So this is why the Big Bang model fails, unless you accept uh, a creator was responsible for it. So. I'm out, man. Chad Elliott, the atheist killer, the AK, with a new video. Uh, I look forward to hearing your responses. I love y'all. God bless. I'm out of here. Peace.